welcome to Ursi's Unique Eats. I'm Ursula, also known as Ursi, and this is my kitchen. Today we're whipping up a dessert that sounds really complicated. It's called a millionaire tart. I'm not a millionaire, but you can still enjoy a millionaire tart even without the big box. In its simplest definition, a millionaire tart is basically a giant Twix bar. Who doesn't love a giant Twix bar? Twix is absolutely my favorite candy bar. It's also my fiance, Danny, so this is the perfect dessert for us on kind of, it's not really a special Sunday night that I'm making it, but just a nice Sunday night dessert. It's composed of three different layers, the first being a shortbread layer, which only takes three ingredients to make, then a layer of melted caramel, and then topped off with a layer of melted chocolate. It is unbelievably simple to make this millionaire tart because, I mean, look at it, it's just got six ingredients. Let's check out these six ingredients so you can see how to make your own fancy, but simple, millionaire tart at home. To make the millionaire tart, you will need the following six ingredients. Two cups of all-purpose white flour, half a cup of granulated sugar, and two sticks of softened, unsalted butter. As you can see, mine are really, really soft. I left them on my windowsill for about an hour, but you don't need to do that. You can just keep them out on your counter, and as long as they're soft to the touch, mine are very soft. They're a little less soft, it's okay. These three ingredients will make the shortbread crust. The next layer of our tart is a caramel layer. So in order to do that, I have right here some caramel squares. I just bought a 10 ounce bag of them, unwrap them and put them in here. You can make your own caramel at home, but it's, I don't wanna say it's hard. It's kind of hard. I've never really, I've done it successfully like once or twice. I've never had any major failures, but I think this is just so much easier and so much faster and honestly kind of tastes the same anyway. So why jump through a million hoops when you can just melt down some boxed uh, squares of caramel. After that, there's going to be a chocolate layer. So you're going to use just about a cup, cup and a half of semi-sweet chocolate chips. We're gonna melt those down as well. And then I always have on hand just about half a cup of heavy cream. Not that you need it for everything. Sometimes when I melt down the caramel, though, if it's a little thick, I'll add a little bit at a time. So you might not need the full half cup, but definitely some to have on hand is better than none. Now that you've seen all the ingredients that I will be using to make the millionaire tart, let's talk a little bit about the pan that I'll be making it in. This is a springform baking pan. Some of you might recognize this from when you've made cheesecake at home. It's really just a 10 inch, maybe this is nine inch, a nine or 10 inch, either one will do, I promise, springform pan. And it's a cake pan, but it has this little latch on the side. So when you open up this latch, the bottom actually pops out. Now, when you're making something like a cheesecake, or in our case, a millionaire shortbread tart, this is really helpful because it can be challenging if you were in a regular cake pan to get your tart out all in one piece. Here, all you have to do is open the latch and very carefully push it up. I'll be showing you how to do that just a little bit later in this video when the millionaire shortbread is done. Right now, it's time to start our very first layer, the shortbread. So let's take the butter, the sugar, and the flour over to my stand mixer and whip it up. Here we are at the stand mixer where we're going to whip up our shortbread. Again, this serves as the first layer of the millionaire tart, so it's almost like a shortbread crust. It is super simple to make. I mean, come on, there's only three ingredients here, but let's whip it up together. Here is some softened butter. That's going to go into the mixer first. Oops, kind of missed a little bit of the side of the bowl there. Followed by your granulated sugar. I know this seems like a lot of flour and not a lot of sugar, but think about how sweet the rest of the tart is. It's caramel and chocolate. So you're not gonna want a super, super sweet base. Everything else is really sweet, so this will help balance it out and not make it like, ooh, too sweet for me. So add your sugar. I like to get it all around the bowl. And now we're going to cream this together till it's light and fluffy. sugar mixture is super light and fluffy. It's traveled a bit up the sides of the bowl, so I'm just going to scrape it down with one of my rubber spatulas. This will really help the butter be in the perfect place when we start adding our flour. So our next and final step is just to add a little bit of flour at a time on a low speed to the shortbread mixture that we have so far right here, the butter and the sugar. You could add all the flour at once, but I really feel like it creates a flour uh, cloud. So I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time. I'm not really measuring. I'm just kind of beating like one third or 
maybe one fourth, less than half. Math is not always my specialty. Right like that on the low speed. I'll check back with you when I've beaten in all the flour. nice and incorporated into my shortbread. It's a little crumbly, which sometimes happens with shortbread, but we're gonna be pressing it down into the pan, so you'll get a real good chance to make sure that everything sticks together very well. Let's head back to my kitchen island so we can put the shortbread crust in the pan and then pop it in the oven. All right, it's time to put the shortbread into our springform baking pan. Fun fact, because there's so much butter in our shortbread mix, I mean, think about it. It's like more butter than it is flour and sugar even put together. You do not have to grease the pan. This is true for any shortbread cookie. And trust me, I'm the first person to always be like, put parchment paper in there, grease the pan. It doesn't mean anything if you can't get it out of the pan. This will not stick to your pan. You'd have to like burn it in there for it to stick to your pan. There is so much butter. So let's get started with putting this super great mixture into an ungreased springform pan. As I told you before, our dough, it's mostly stuck together. Maybe not all the pieces, and you'll just have to pat it together, which is fine because that's what we're doing anyway when we put it in the pan. It's better this way than over mixing it into a big stiff thing of dough. So I'm just using my hands. Clean hands are your best friend in the kitchen, and I'm popping it right in there. I'm going to use my hands to push it down, and this can be tricky because you want an even layer, and I wish I had some great helpful trick to be like, and then this is how I get it even every single time. Sometimes it's more even than other times, but when you're eating a homemade treat, that's part of the joy of it. You're not eating a homemade treat for sheer perfection. You're not eating a homemade treat for, look how fancy I am. This could be in a French patisserie window. You're eating it because someone that you love made it, or in my case, I'm eating it so I can test the recipe for this incredible channel and blog. As you see, I'm just kind of using my hands to get it in there. There's gonna be some fingerprints, but this is gonna be covered by caramel and chocolate and no one will see it. If you don't wanna use your hands, you can always use a measuring cup to kind of push it through and that won't, that'll give you a um, even push down. It won't have all these little fingerprints that I have, but I'm pretty happy with this. There's just one more step now before we put it in the oven. We're gonna poke some holes in it. Much like when you do a pie crust, it can rise and create bubbles. You wanna stop that and give the steam of the butter a place to release because when the butter goes into the oven, it's gonna melt and it can help create steam. And then it's gonna get trapped in there and we want a crisp shortbread. So I'm just gonna poke some holes. I'm not going all the way through, just going like halfway down. And in no particular order either. Just kind of random holes. As I'm doing this, I can actually feel that my uh, crust is pretty even, not super even. It might be a little thicker here, so I'm just gonna push it down and I can re-poke those holes. There we go. Nothing that you can't fix. All right, looks good to me. Into the oven we go. After 40 to 45 minutes in the oven, take your shortbread out and allow it to cool on a wire rack. The edges should just be turning brown and the middle should still be that beautiful sandy brown color. Allow to cool completely before pouring caramel over. Our shortbread is cooling in the other room. So right now it's time to make the caramel for the caramel layer. There are two ways that you can melt caramel. The first one is in the microwave. You just heat it for 30 seconds, you stir, you put it back in for 30 seconds, you stir. I much prefer this method because I feel like I have total control. This method that I'm using is called the double boiler method. For the double boiler method, you just need one pot, fill it like about an inch or so of water, get the water to the simmering point, and then put it down on low. Then you're gonna want a heat proof bowl. This is a glass baking bowl that I grabbed from my mom's kitchen when I moved out. Ideally, I'd like a little bit bigger one, but I'm working with what I have and I encourage you to do the same. So you're going to set the glass bowl right here over the pot, and now we're going to add our caramel. This could take a while because all that's not gonna melt in 10 seconds. So you leave it there to melt, and you can stir with, you could use a regular spoon. I'm using my rubber spatula, that way it's an easy cleanup. We're gonna be here for a while melting. I also have some heavy cream. I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit in here. Like I said in the intro, it's not really an exact science of how much cream to use. It really depends on your preferred consistency. So I'm gonna let this melt together, and I'll check back with you in a second. As you can 
see our caramel is just about done. There's still some big chunks like right here. So keep stirring, add cream if you think it needs it. Ah, my bowl got stuck. Um, keep a, other than that by, so that you could pop that down without totally burning yourself, but another two, three, maybe five minutes, and this should be done. It's getting real silky now. As you can see, our caramel is nice and silky smooth. It is ready to go. I'm gonna turn off my heat just to let you know. Caramel is extremely hot when it's hot. Your glass bowl is probably also hot as well. While my caramel was melting, I discovered a tear in my oven mitt. So now I'm using different oven mitts. Actually, let me get the second one too. And we can carry this right over to my kitchen island. It's time to add the caramel to our shortbread. See you at the island. Here we are back at my kitchen island. I have my fully cooled shortbread right here in my springform baking pan. I have my hot caramel still. Be very cautious of burning your hands and your fingers on caramel. Nothing burns quite like a caramel burn. And I actually have a secret hidden thing on my island. I bet you can't see it. Da, 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 da. Here it is. This is almost like not cellophane or plastic. It's called acetate. I'm like 98% positive. My mom used to say when she makes tarts or really fancy naked cakes to keep all the sides beautiful and even. I'm actually going to use it to line the inside of my pan because I really just, you know me, I hate, if something gets stuck in the pan, I feel like a total failure. You can also use parchment paper for this. this that's what I was going to use up until about five minutes ago when I stumbled across this in my pantry. So to fit this in, I'm actually gonna open the latch. And just like I told you at the beginning of the video, the shortbread pops out really beautifully. Look at that nice bake on that shortbread. Oh, gorgeous. I hope yours looks just like mine. I'm gonna put it right back in and set it down here on my island. Now there's a little bit of open space all around here. I'm gonna take this piece of paper, and this takes a little bit of fiddling with, and it would if you were using parchment paper too, just to get it down and all around. I, let's see if I could do this in just one even shot. Yes, gorgeous. Now you just seal back up your pan. Hmm. I'm wrinkling a little, but I think we'll be okay. Actually, hang tight while I make a few adjustments. Ah, much better. Okay, so now that your tin is lined, this will just kind of help make sure that the caramel doesn't stick to the sides of the pan. Look at that, beautiful. It's fine if it comes up a little bit, your parchment paper probably will too. Feel free to gamble and not do this step, but it's a gamble. Your tart might totally stick to the pan. I'm not sure, I've never done it without. I'm going to just give my caramel a nice little stir. All right, not so hot. Still gonna use my oven mitt just in case. And you're just going to pour directly over it. Actually, my oven mitt's getting in the way. Just gonna pour directly over it. Again, you really wanna make sure you're doing this on cooled shortbread. If your shortbread is not cool, it's gonna soak the caramel right in. And while that would probably taste so delicious, you wouldn't have the beautiful distinct layers that are really the highlight of this millionaire tart. Making sure I get every last bit of caramel. I think I did. Now I'm just gonna use a little offset spatula to push the caramel around. You want to act fast. Your caramel's definitely not gonna set right away, but the cooler it gets, the harder it is to spread. As you can see, my caramel still has a few little lumps in it. Oh well, no one's gonna see it once it's covered with chocolate. So if yours still has a few lumps in it, I won't tell. Continue spreading till it's in a nice even layer. All right, that's it. I'm gonna stop right there because it looks beautiful. It's pretty even. Again, homemade baked good. Not gonna always be perfect. The next step is to add the chocolate layer. But if you pour melted chocolate onto warm caramel, it's gonna make chocolate caramel soup. Sounds delicious. Not what we're going for here. Chill this in the fridge for about a half hour to an hour. See you in then. While the caramel's cooling, I am going to melt my chocolate chips. Like I said earlier, about a cup, cup and one fourth chocolate chips, and we just pop them right in the double boiler. As you can see, I'm even using the same bowl as I was before. Washed it out, same pot. And we're gonna sit here and we're gonna melt chocolate. All right, so my chocolate is all melted and take a look at this. It is just beautiful and smooth. My beautiful caramel is set. 
Now you really want to make sure your caramel is cool and set. I've had mine in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour and look, when I poke, I get a little bit of pushback, but I can feel that it's cold and it's set. If your caramel is not set at this stage, please pop it in the freezer, keep it in the fridge. Be a little patient. I know it's so hard, especially if you're bringing this to an event, but if you pour warm or hot chocolate on top of caramel that's not set, it's all gonna just to do that again because I'm sure that was really cute and attractive. So my caramel is set. My chocolate right now is not super hot. I melted it, it's been sitting here for about two, three minutes. Look, you should just be able to touch it with your finger and feel warm to room temperature. Plus now, mm -hmm, you got some chocolate. So I'm just gonna very boldly pour it on like this. I'm not too worried about getting it even because I'm gonna go in there with my offset spatula. Actually, I'll pour that right now. And if I have to go back and add more, I will. So offset spatula. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. Your chocolate layer is not going to be as super thick as your caramel layer is. It's gonna be just a thin layer of chocolate. All right, since I melted all this chocolate, I'm just gonna add a little bit more handy dandy rubber spatula just to really get it all out of the bowl. I love having these rubber spatula things at my disposal. As you can see, there has been no melting of my caramel. My chocolate is setting beautifully. All right, I think I'm gonna be finished touching it and I'm gonna pop it in the fridge for at least 45 minutes until my chocolate's cool. And then I can't wait to pop it out of the tin and show you the finished product. See you in 45. Here we are. My tart has been chilling in the fridge for 45 minutes. Take a look, all firmed up, all solid. You can see not totally perfect, not such a much, but listen, sounds like you're knocking on a door. That's how you know your chocolate is fully cooled. Also, you kind of notice if it was melted and wasn't cold and felt mushy. So it's time to take the tart out. We're gonna just open up the spring of our springform pan, slide it on over, and pop it out. Sorry, that's not super elegant to do on camera, but wow. Take a look around my acetate paper. You can really see the layers. Not all perfect beautiful nonetheless. So just be a little gentle. If you use parchment paper, you should be able to remove it just as easily as I'm about to remove this. But caramel can be a little sticky, as you can hear. But as you see, it's still coming off. Well, would you look at that? A little bit of chocolate sticking up, so I'm actually just going to break that right off. And I'll clean that up for beautiful presentation sake. Here is our millionaire tart. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. I just wanna pick it up and look at it again. You could serve it right on this plate. I can't cut it right now though because the chocolate still feels really hard. So I'm gonna let it sit at room temperature for about 10 minutes before I cut in and enjoy. Thank you so much for baking with me today. I hope your millionaire tarts came out beautiful and like a million bucks at home. I'm Mercy from Mercy's Unique Eats, enjoy.